Shalom. All right. In this video, I'm going to share with you a few verses from Second Ezra, chapter thirteen. It's from the Apocrypha. And what I like about Second Ezra is that there's a lot of revelation concerning these last days. All right. But in this video, we're gonna examine some verses in this chapter that expose the rapture teaching as a fraud all right this is from the official King James Bible online all right second Ezra chapter 13 and I'm gonna skip down to verse 15 all right, here Estras is being shown an interpretation of a dream that he had. All right, let's click on verse 16. All right, here's what this verse says. For as I conceived in mine understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. So here it clearly lets you know that those that are not left behind well they're gonna get it even worse than those that are left behind so much for the rapture teaching huh most people are being taught that oh if, if you're left behind oh that's bad <laughs> no it's the total opposite again why do you think they toss the apocrypha to the side because when you read the gospel the teachings of Christ he tells you one shall be taken, one left. Most people think that the one taken is the one in safety. No, the one taken is either a foolish believer or a evildoer. We are to remain behind to help others to win souls for the kingdom. So don't be deceived. Alright, verse 17 says, For they that were not left were in heaviness. See that? those that were not not left behind were in heaviness why because of what it says here in verse 24 of second Ezra chapter 13 it says that know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead that's why those that were not left behind were in heaviness because they were killed they died all right so pray that you may be counted worthy to escape what's to come again blessed are they that remain woe to them that are not left behind all right So you can read it for yourself. So I'll, I'll leave the link up for this chapter. It talks about the things that will befall those that are left behind in these last days. Many will be needy, but they'll be better off in the long run than those that got it going for themselves. And when all hell breaks loose, those that wait till the last minute to get right with the Most High and His Son, they're going to be removed. Their portion will be assigned with the wicked. Okay, here's verse 22. Whereas well, thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. So what's going to happen to those that are left behind? Verse 23 says that Those that shall endure the peril in the time of tribulation will keep themselves, will preserve themselves. They that be falling into danger, those that fall into tribulation are such as have works and faith toward the Almighty. They're going to go through some stuff, but 
like I said, they're going to be better off than those that are removed with the wicked. Second Esther 13.24 again says that, Know and understand this, therefore, that they which are left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. Verse 20 says that Verse 20 says that It is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things Than to pass away as a cloud out of the world And not see the things that happen in the last days So Estrus is encouraging those that are living in these latter days To remain and see what happens It's a blessing you know we don't know what's going to happen to the dead. There might be some Christians thinking they're going to heaven, wake up in the in the lake in hell, you know. We don't know. There might be some that end up in heaven, who knows, martyred, but they might look down and be like, man, I should have stayed. I should have prayed to be counted worthy to escape these things. I should have done my job. I should have had some works, whether it be helping others with that are needy, if you have... If you could assist others with their needs, if you're blessed financially, maybe, man, I should have done more for the people. Or if you're a teacher, man, I should have taught more. I should have helped others share what I know with others because there's a lot of Christians learning and they're not sharing the scriptures. They're not putting any videos. They're not, they're not communing with, with other believers, you know. They're not doing anything. They're just idle. And then when you try to share with, with them a few things, you know, they, they shun at the commandments. So they're going to be removed, you know. You're, you're not just going to learn and, and not apply these things into your life, you know, and expect that the Most High to, to save you. If you're not contributing to others, to others' needs, if you're not contributing to the kingdom to win souls, then don't expect to be left behind. Alright, so just wanted to share this because this chapter totally destroys the rapture teaching. And this isn't the only place. I'm sure there are other extra biblical texts that mention this, but this is like a quick, short, and to the point chapter with a few verses that exposes the rapture doctrine. Why do you think they pushed the Apocrypha to the side? It was in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible, you know? Yes, the Bible's not perfect, but. If you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need to worry about the distortions in the scriptures. The Spirit will help you, lead you into the proper interpretation of these verses. So, even uh, in the Gospels, Christ says, one will be taken, one will be left. So, who are the ones taken? The wicked or the foolish virgins? You know? Anyways just wanted to share this and I'll leave the links up for those interested in reading about this if you know somebody that believes in the rapture and reads the apocrypha then show them this chapter and these verses and even if they don't you know let them know hey 